everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to try out the Paradise Fibers Ice Dyeing Project that was included in their June 2021 Fiber of the Month Club subscription. Before we jump in, I do want to say that I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate and they do send me their Fiber of the Month Club for free for me to open up and review. But as you know, I really enjoy doing their dyeing projects and so this is not a sponsored video, but if you would like to learn more about the Fiber of the Month Club or the fiber that I'm using today, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. This is going to be my first time playing with the new Paradise Fibers acid dyes and I am really Really excited to have this first impression of the dyes. Now I was a little bit torn on whether I should do a full dye review or what as part of this video, but I actually reached out to Paradise Fibers and they did send me their entire collection of acid dyes, so I will do a more full in-depth review of that in an upcoming video. But today let's do this ice dyeing project. Today we will be dyeing this gorgeous 4.2 ounce mulberry silk brick. Uh, the staple length is about 15 microns. It's extra wide, thick combed top, uh, so that makes it easy to spread out and dye or wet felt or whatever you may want to do with it. And ooh, this does actually spread really, really well. I wonder how well it will spread out when it's wet, but this is like a really nice spread. The nice thing about doing something like ice dyeing on roving versus yarn is that if we get, an, I mean you will get uneven color penetration, but if the dye just strikes to the top of the roving and doesn't go all the way through the bottom, since you're gonna spin, the colors will blend and that'll be beautiful. So that's less of a concern for me than when I've done ice dyeing on yarn in the past. Since we are using acid dyes today, all of the tools and equipment I am using in this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for the preparation of food. And while I am dealing with the dry acid dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. So please make sure that you have proper safety equipment before doing a project like this. But we have about half of a teaspoon of each of these colors. Now, I have a whole video on measuring dye powder by weight versus by volume and how it can vary based on the color and probably also the brand. But an approximately half a teaspoon is probably around a gram of each of the colors. At least when it comes to Dharma acid dyes, one teaspoon uh, is anywhere from I guess about two to 2.8 grams from the few colors I tested in that video. So this should be plenty of dye to use on all of this fiber. Now the three colors that we were provided are magenta, yellow, and turquoise, which I think is a really great combination for a tie-dye type feel. Uh, these will blend I mean, this is my hypothesis. I haven't done any color mixing with these colors, but in general, a magenta is less pigmented than a red and a turquoise a little less pigmented than a blue. So therefore they may balance a little bit better with the yellow, um, even though the blue and the pink will likely overwhelm the yellow when it comes to any mixing that we see on our ice. For ice dyeing, the general premise is that we will have our pre-soaked fiber, we'll pre-soak it with some acid, lay it out on some kind of wire rack with ice on top of it, we'll sprinkle the dye on top of the ice and let it melt and let the color spread and be beautiful and fun. Now, Paradise Fibers does have a tutorial here. I am going to do a few modifications based on my experience. Uh, in addition to, I think, pre-soaking the silk in vinegar, I will likely add some citric acid powder onto the surface when we're doing adding the dye on top of the ice. Just so that way there's a bit more acid and we're not diluting the vinegar and the silk that much. The other thing that I will do at the end is that I'm going to heat set this and I'll steam set the fiber on the stove before we go and rinse it just to really give a chance for those colors to set. In my experience, silk does require a little bit more heat and acid than say wool to bind colors, which both makes this a great candidate for ice dyeing like we're going to do now, but also means that 
uh, I think I want it to have just a little bit more heat. But now, let's get ready to dye this yarn. In this basin, I have maybe eight cups of warm tap water, maybe a little more or a little less. And I'm gonna add a third, approximately, a third of a cup of white vinegar to this pre-soak. With acid dyes, in order to get the color to set, you need your acid, you need um, your dyes, and then you need some heat. And then you can combine those in a number of different ways. So the heat from the sun could be enough to help all of the colors bind, but there's definitely no harm at all in doing a little bit of some gentle steam uh, to, I guess, finish off the color. Normally, my pre-soaks start off cool, but since Paradise Fibers actually recommended that we start off warm, I figured that was a good idea. Silk can take a long time to get wet. <laughs> a really long time. And so they recommend a pre-soak of up to 48 hours. Uh, so I am going to set this aside let it sit, I will come and press periodically to help remove the air from this. If you don't pre-soak it very long and if the fibers aren't completely saturated, you will get more uneven color absorption, which depending on what you are going for, could be fine with you, so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm gonna set this aside for at least a day. Okay, it is not that hot yet but it's gonna be a scorcher today. And so this is a great situation for some ice dye. Right here I have a dollar store kitty litter tray and a dollar store basket that I will set up so that way we can keep our silk out of the uh, melt that we have. But you can also do ice dyeing and leave it in the melt and capture everything as well. But to help capture any runoff, Right here I have a skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is completely dry and no acid. And so I just have this down here because we can catch some of those colors as it comes off. And there will also be acid that comes down um, as this goes. So we've got that. And now we've got our pre-soaked silk. And I'm gonna carefully, very carefully remove it. Uh, it has soaked for about 24 hours, that's it. And I'm removing some of the liquid from it. And now I want to try to spread it out as much as I possibly can. The only issue with what I have right here is that I don't have the largest surface area for spreading it out. So if I had, if I was using less of the silk or if I had more uh, space, then I could spread it out more than I am able to currently. Because when it was dry, you could see like how much this can be spread. And because of the, there's gonna be some areas with some twists that are gonna have some more resist, but I should be able to at least spread this enough so that we aren't seeing any of the green basket underneath it. Now some of these areas that are hanging over the edge will end up with more white in there. That's just sort of the way that it will work, but that is okay okay because this is something that we will spin but now i'm going to go ahead and get the ice we're locking out a tiny bit because we're currently in the shade over here um, but later as the day progresses this uh, patio will become quite sunny and so i'm really just taking these ice cubes and carefully i'm layering them on you can probably tell up oh, and that one went overboard that's fine you can probably tell from the shape that the ice that I have is ice that I have to uh, make myself. <laughs> but yeah, that is fine. So I am a little more carefully placing some at the edge. I know that because the silk is wet, the ice will sort of stick to it a little bit, um, allowing me to get 
coverage sort of off the edge a bit, but I don't want to like felt anything. So I am trying to be careful. This is pretty good. We don't need it to be like many layers thick. You can put on as much as you would like. I had started with a little over a gallon bag filled and we are using not quite all of that. But you could have fun with different ice shapes and things like that as well. Just trying to get a little more at some of these edges because then we can create fun melting patterns. So I would say, given what I have left in my little bag, I've used about a gallon bag filled with ice cubes. But now, oh my gosh, I can see like, <laughs> oh, of condensation and evaporation. All right, now I'm gonna go put on my respirator mask, put on gloves and come out with dry hands and we'll start adding the dye to our ice. Here are the three colors that we'll be working with today. We've got a yellow, a cyan and a magenta. Um, and I like that they're in these little color-coded sample containers. I am gonna start with the yellow um, because in general, yellow tends to be a little bit less uh, pigmented than some other colors. And so uh, I wanna have it in the middle. It might get all overtaken by the blue and the pink, but it also may not. So these, and I'm kind of going in a wide area because we will overlap these colors. But the goal, and some is going directly onto the silk. My goal here is to layer this dye on fairly evenly because we will get unevenness from the way that these colors melt onto the fiber. And I am trying, whoop, that was a lot right there. I'm trying to use it all to the best of my, there we go, ability. And I did bring uh, a little water bucket <laughs> to rinse off my fingers a bit in between going from different colors. The beautiful yellow color that we now have in our water. So let's do the magenta next. And again, oh, so this is a lot finer than the yellow. It is almost more sand-like from the way it is just really easily spreading onto the ice. But you can also tell that it is probably more pigmented. So again, some is going directly onto the silk, but I am also okay with that. And if I didn't have more of these dyes to play with, this one is extremely finely milled. If I didn't have more to play with, then I wouldn't use it all. But yeah, this, so the yellow was a little bit more clumped and this pink was easier to spread out. The main reason why I'm rinsing off my fingers in between colors is just so that way I can kind of see what the color um, is like on its own, even if I can't really see. So the blue, I'm trying to see if you're like as fine. Yeah, it's pre pretty uh, similar to that pink in terms of the pink seems to be a little more finely milled. The, the blue is a little more clumpier. Turquoise colors can be more of a pain to rinse. So that is something to just keep in mind. But this color looks very pigmented. One reason why yellow is less pigmented than the blues and the fuchsias is that uh, when yellow starts to get too pigmented, it turns orange. So. That is just my experience there. Now, this whole process, and part of that could be with these containers, is a bit messier 
than what I was expecting. So I am going to do a fair amount of cleanup, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the area where I am working and these edges of the containers uh, before I go ahead and remove my mask. But we do have a fair amount of pigment here for some leave no dye behind. All the dye around here is now wet and I am seeing some drips start to go down onto our stroll beneath. But I do want to now take um, some citric acid powder. And this is a thicker powder, so I'm okay using it without a mask. And I am just lightly sprinkling it onto the ice just to add some additional acid to everything. Uh, I think when I've done this in the past, you could certainly start by mixing your dyes with the acid powder. And there's no question that this will aid with some of the melting, but hopefully this will help us maintain some vibrancy. This is just this citric acid. And, ooh, but some of these rivers and colors on the ice are so beautiful. I just love watching the different colors mix and then the streaks as the color starts to melt the ice and create rivers through it. And with a lot of our magenta, a lot of the color is no longer on top of the ice. It's already melted and slid down. But ooh, ooh, here's one other cute spot. Okay, so here is a spot of the silk where we can see some blues are gonna come in and then the pink and the yellow, but it is dripping onto an ice cube that fell off down into the container and will likely then be soaked up by our superwash yarn, which if I didn't say that yarn beneath there is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It doesn't need a lot of acid to absorb colors. The blue is gorgeous, the pink is gorgeous, the yellow is gorgeous, the colors are great. The question is what level of vibrancy can we maintain um, on the silk. Don't be surprised <laughs> when your silk looks really, really vibrant when it's wet and then feels a lot more pastel when it dries. Uh, silk takes a lot more pigment to have a final pigmented color. I've done some side-by-sides on 100% silk with wool and other things, so you can go and check out those comparisons. Now we all we have to do is wait and try to be as patient as possible. I have a feeling that it'll only be a couple of hours before all of these colors have melted. Uh, so it is currently about 8.30 a.m. and so I'll check back in in a couple of hours. Checking in after an hour. Ooh, I love some of this watercolory action from the way the colors are layering. I really, really hope this stays. There seem to be some areas on the blue that I'm not sure, it's looking like we might have undissolved pigments that are a little bit too clumped, but we will address that once everything has finished melting. You can also tell that we are now absolutely in the sun. Now beneath the surface, it's probably a little hard to see, but we do have some nice color accumulating. I see a beautiful like purple and then blue over here. I'll lift up it at the end but I do see on the underside of the surface I see blue went through all the way not as much yellow has come all the way through but some pink has come all the way through the silk so I don't know if the yellow is striking faster or if it's just a bit less pigmented but we're definitely seeing blue drip down from that blue side and actually from over here on the bottom, I see blue, purple, and pink down there. That's really fun. The color here is gorgeous. We are about two hours in and we just have a tiny bit of ice left, but I absolutely love all of the rainbow colors that we see here in the silk. And I really, 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 really hope that they stick around and Again, I'm trying to like look down beneath it. Yeah, I would say that there's color all the way through on the bottom. We're still definitely dripping color down below. It's so bright out here, I'm not sure if you can see, but I do see a gradient of color down below. I don't know how much 
is in the liquid versus on the yarn. I can't really see. At some point, we'll go ahead and add uh, a good splash of vinegar down there. I definitely don't want the silk to dry out, but I I think that, I mean, I don't think it'll dry off that quickly. It is still nice and wet. The ice is functionally all melted, um, but I think what I wanna do is cover this because I'd like it to get some heat from the sun. Um, and this will protect it and allow some heat to come in still. The sun, I didn't really press on it at all. The sun um, should heat up this foil nicely. It'll prevent some amount of evaporation, uh, at least a bit, <laughs> and help keep some of the moisture in there hopefully. Uh, so uh, again, I'll come back in about an hour, but it would be nice if things uh, start warming up a little bit so we can get some heat of the sun to help set it before we go and steam because then I don't really want the colors to move around when I pick up the fiber. So I'd like as much to set outside as possible. So maybe I'll reevaluate and we'll leave it out here longer as long as our fiber is staying nice and wet. It's now about 1 p.m. We are still in the sun, but probably not for that much longer. And removing the foil, I do see, uh, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but I do see some blue dye, some yellow dye, and a tiny bit of some pink dye just on the underside of the foil. Coverage here on the fiber is really, really lovely. And again, my plan is to seam set this. I love the way this is happening. And I don't even know if I'd wrap it. I might just sort of place it very much like this inside a steamer basket, but in a little while. Um, the one thing that I would like to do, let's see if I can lift this. Show what's happening beneath, because this is beautiful. There is absolutely pigment all over the place here. And ooh, I see some green too. I am not going to touch or move that yarn. I really want to be, uh, and I do have a tiny bit of blue on my hands. So I'll go wash my hands in a moment. I really want the color that happens there to be reflective of what's sort of going on. But I am gonna pour down probably what is, and this may make things move a bit, this is probably between like a third to a half cup of vinegar into that water below. Now, the colors that we have sort of left uh, here, the, the, the pink and the turquoise, those are two colors that actually aren't always the best for doing a cool that type technique. I'm not sure about the formulation of the Paradise Fibers dyes versus, say, Derma or Jacquard, but uh, turquoise and fuchsias tend to need some heat to set. So we may not see things clear on the bottom, but I am amending from where I was earlier, and I'm going to let things, and I'm going to leave things out here all afternoon as long as the weather's going to be clear. I think it's 95 degrees outside, and it's not going to hurt anything for it to remain outside and just get a little bit warmer. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it hot, but it is not ice cold anymore. I will be back in another few hours and I am gonna just make sure <laughs> that this is nice and crimped onto the edge so hopefully it does not blow away. It is about 4 p.m. and it just started to rain and you may or may not hear some thunder in the background. But now, let's uncover this. Ugh. I'm really impressed that we're still seeing some yellow in here in addition to the like reds and oranges. Ugh, it's really, really great. But what I want to do is get a look at the underside. So this is how we're gonna do it. All right, this tin foil has been touching it anyway. So we are going to pick this up so we can see the under side of the fiber. I'm really excited to, at the end when the fiber is dry, 
take a look and see how the color penetration worked. Do we have color all the way to the center? or is it along the sides? But like I had mentioned, which I don't know if the outside footage, how things showed up, the pink and the blue really did soak all the way through. The yellow didn't. Uh, so I think that that is very interesting. Now, one other thing I'm really curious about right now is, well, that's handy. Okay, so if I press on the blue, we see a fair amount of color, but pressing on the pink, that's pretty cool. The pinks have mostly, okay, there's some there, but a lot of the pinks have absorbed. Anyway, now I am going to do my best. I think I'm gonna just sort of roll this up like this to gently transfer things into my steamer basket. Uh, this is a multi-pot with uh, a basket on top and then down below we have water which I will boil and I'm gonna go ahead and place a lid on this and then we're gonna let this steam set for at least 30 minutes I don't know if it was apparent while we were outside or if you can even see it on camera right now but see we do have some yellow red and blue lots of blue dye stuck to that foil and that wasn't just from this flip we just did the silk is nice and steamy i'm going to turn off the heat and leave it here in the pot to have a little more heat to cool off again i know that there's probably some undissolved dye so we will likely have a reasonable amount of rinsing but i can cross my fingers on that one so i'm gonna let this sit and cool uh completely okay i'm coming in with our beautiful, beautiful silk, plopping it in. And I think that we have some potentially undissolved dye, but we will see. I do wanna check. Yeah, we have a little bit of color that has bled through here, but don't worry, we'll use this. And the dye that was left over, um, we'll dye another skein with that, so it won't go to waste. Um, but, Okay, see I touched it and I've got dye on my fingers. I need to think about how to best do this because I don't want to felt the fiber, but I do want to rinse off that dye. So I think I've transferred it to a smaller, a smaller container. And this way I can lift up the yarn, or sorry, the fiber, and rinse out dye particles. Uh, so this way I can easily lift it up. And actually, I can then have the water not run on it. I can have it run next to it. But we can get this nice and submerged this way. I mean, looking at these colors, oh my god, it's amazing. So now I can gently press in. I mean, that's not bad, but I haven't added any uh, soap yet. But the large globs of blue have been removed, so that is good. But now I'm going to go ahead, and as we fill this up again, I'm going to shake this over and just do the edge of a cap. And maybe I'll do a little splash of some centerfold. Uh, but ironically, is this doing better on the silk? Huh. Than on the yarn. I mean, the one thing that's different here is stuff that wasn't binding to the silk was dripping through. So, in a way, the ice has already rinsed it a little bit. I mean, I'm definitely seeing blue bleed, but not, and of course we're seeing the suds on the fiber. But what we're not seeing in either of them is the visible color on the yarn or fiber decrease. So that is good. But what I'm gonna do now, similar with this one, 
is I am going to fill this back up with water and just let it soak for a bit. I'm just going to let it soak uh, and then, you know, we will come back and continue rinsing. But these colors are amazing. I do want to caution myself and everyone else that they will look less vibrant once it dries. That is the nature of silk. Silk gets almost, the fibers get a little bit translucent uh, when they're wet. And so then when they're dry, the white of the fiber is more visible, which then makes things appear more pastel. But I mean, that's not, this isn't bad. I think that the ice already rinsed out and like the bulk of non-soluble stuff is probably in the other container. But anyway, I'm gonna let this sit for at least 15 minutes. It is incredible to me that we're seeing so much bleeding. I mean, I guess we have bleeding here as well, but I was like, we're seeing so much bleeding on the yarn and so much less, I'm gonna press out so much less with the silk. Um, that is just interesting. So what I'm gonna do with the silk is I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out. I think a few more times. There is still some blue in here, but as long as when I touch it with my hands, I'm not seeing any more color come off. Aha, see I got a little bit of color off. So maybe this is a spot that I need to gently rinse a little bit more. But as long as I stop having dye come off on my hands, then I am more inclined to consider this one done. I mean, that's not very much in there at all. And it is easier to rinse things once they have been uh, spun. But yeah, there's like a hair in some of these darkest areas that I can manually assist and hopefully this will not be felting the silk at all. Um, but I'm very excited to try spinning it. I just, fiber, wet fiber always makes me nervous. So anyway, I will come back with this if I observe anything notable, but otherwise I'll put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Now I'm gonna go rinse off this basket and we'll take a look at this yarn. We do have some points here where some blue dripped down from moving that over and I am just sort of tapping that out. I have not touched this yet. This patterning came from the yarn itself, but you can see, yeah, we still have a lot of color left in here. And I'm assuming, well, on the blue side, it's probably going to be a bleeder. Looks like there's some unsoluble blue there that I can see. So I am torn. This has sat outside all day and I'm going ahead and just sort of wiping down these edges of the pan. This is sat outside all day and with a superwash yarn, we really, really should have seen some reasonable color uh, penetration on yarn like this. So I'm not sure why things aren't going a little faster. But, hmm, man, I'm regretting that this is in plastic now because if this were in a metal steam pan, I think we're gonna have to transfer it. I love this magic that we got right here. Uh, I, I think that I need to transfer it to a steam pan and heat set it. Uh, I love, love, love what it's doing and I think some elements of this will remain, but uh, I can't heat set it in this plastic tub. Now, I also still have the leftover dye uh, from when I was setting this up in the first place, but oh my goodness, there is so much color in here and it's mostly blue. So some things absolutely have set. Uh, I think a lot of those pinks did and the blues and we've got a little bit of yellow. The blues are just going to take more time 
and potentially require more heat. So I could have actually left this as it was there in the pan. Ooh, ooh. Maybe things just maybe things just needed to move because it looks like we're already there. May be enough acid in here that we're already soaking up some of that extra color that we put on. I could be wrong. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just as much color as was there a moment ago. Um, but it's possible that some of it, sometimes you just really need to move things. But given that this yarn started off dry, uh, I think that this is awesome. And it's really fun to get something that is so uh, variegated versus being all one color just from that runoff and the drips of the ice. And it's interesting to me that those yellows are what have struck the axis. I really like that. I am going to go ahead and add a third of a cup of white vinegar, which is a little over five tablespoons. And this should be more than enough acid uh, for this project. And I'm going to move this whole steam pan over to the stove and heat set it um, until not at a boil, but just below a simmer for at least 30 minutes. And then we'll come and check back in. All right. It has been only 15 minutes and almost all of the color has absorbed. There is like a hint of pink left, but the rest of that color is in the yarn. Wahoo. This doesn't mean we won't see bleeding when we go to wash it eventually, but this is what I like to see. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the heat on for the remaining 15 minutes, but then I'm going to turn off the heat and let things cool off so we can wash it. As promising as the heat setting was, as soon as I added soap, the blues came out in force and it did not matter if I was using plain dish soap or when I went to Synthropol and did soaks. Eventually, once the soap was out, it would clear and the rinse water would be very clear again. But then as soon as I added more soap, the bleeding would intensify. And this is something that is always very, very frustrating. And so I went over it again and again and again, and I couldn't get it to stop. Now, it's possible that we have many grams of dye on this 100 grams of yarn. And so, therefore, I would say the turquoise is probably at a higher depth of shade, uh, which means too much of that color on this amount of yarn that I would probably want to use in the future. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly how much of the dye is in it, but <laughs> I just know to be a little more careful because some turquoises can have this kind of problem. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, the bleeding wasn't reducing the amount of color that we saw on the yarn. So we're having bleeding, but we still see a lot of beautiful color in the yarn. So that's great. And I love the color. So I'll be keeping this one for myself because, well, uh, I wouldn't feel okay giving yarn to someone that is bleeding this heavily. And each time I thought, ooh, this is looking clear, this is looking better, and then it would start again. Although watching now on the time lapse, this isn't looking that bad, but it would start again. And so I put it through the spin dryer and hung it up to dry. And meanwhile, there's a little bit of some pink and blue in the steamer basket. Just seeing if I could rinse some of that through. I'm not worried about it washing off. Um, I will be able to take care of that with some soap. But I'm going to set this aside. And you can see just a touch of some purpley color in there. And now I'm coming over it with the dye that I rinsed off of my fingertips and off of these little containers. So I'm going to go rinse this out again. There's really not much. What was residual left in these jars and an overnight soak did remove it. So that's good. But we do have some pigment here. And so let's take another skein of dry Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn and see 
What kind? Ooh, it is breaking. I see. Ooh, ooh. So putting it in, and we had like one mixture. I'm seeing these pinks sort of come into the yarn first uh, before those blues. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, look. See how the water has become a lot more blue than it was before? Oh, that is fun. Okay. Um, the yarn, this is just stroll again. It is dry. I am working on soaking it up, but now I'm going to get some acid. One, two, all right, three tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, and I will turn on the heat in a moment to then try to let this yarn soak up these colors. But we clearly have potential for some beautiful breaking. And I'm gonna heat this for probably about 30 minutes, then I'll turn off the heat, and I'll wash this off camera, but we'll show what it looks like finished at the very end. This breaking that we're seeing here, the separation of the purple into pinks and blues, should not be surprising. The thing that is surprising me is that the pinks are striking pretty quickly, which is not something I always see with fuchsia colors. The turquoise being slow is something that I have seen before um, with acid dyes, but I am very excited by this observation and this is something we will be able to play with more with these uh, Paradise Fibers dyes. But anyway, uh, let's go check in on the washing and we'll see this yarn once it's dry. Here are all of the finished dyed objects from our ice dyeing. The silk maintained a lot of color. I did read, I think, one comment somewhere from the ice dyeing where someone said that all of the blue rinsed out. As you know, I had challenges with color bleeding myself, but we were able to maintain this blue color because we steam set the yarn. I think that this turquoise color does require heat to set and not just lower heat at a long exposure from, say, a hot day in the sun. The fiber is a little bit, uh, Needs, it, it needs some fluffing. <laughs> I have not like fluffed it or anything yet. Uh, I have dyed silk hankies in the past, but never, I guess, a silk brick like this. But I can move the fiber, and we do have some white left, but it does look like our color penetration is really good. And I love the variation and tone that we have in here from that ice dyeing. So, is this the prettiest looking fiber right now? No, it's a little clumped and stuff, but it still would blend or uh, card, you know, you going on like a carding drum or something really, really nicely. Uh, so I am really happy with it and I'm excited to spin it myself. This silk is filled with vibrant, beautiful colors of pink, blue, uh, some greens and yellows and a little bit of orange. The one rainbow color we are missing is a purple, and, well, the reason for that is fairly obvious. We didn't really layer any of the turquoise and pink for this project. Once again, I am extremely impressed by both the depth of the color that we got here in the silk and the color penetration. I'm really impressed that with things sort of all scrunched up, the colors did go really well through the fiber, and part of that is because of how slowly those colors were binding. In the past, when I've done ice dyeing, not with these colors, because I haven't used the Paradise Fibers acid dyes before, but with uh, other, say, like Jacquard acid dyes, the colors strike so quickly onto superwash yarn, depending on the pigments you're using, of course, and the color wouldn't go all the way through. And so that made me less enthusiastic about ice dyeing, unless I was using, say, a blank or something like that where things could be more spread out. But I love these results and love the way the colors layered on, and I really need to do this with a tie-dye t-shirt really, really badly. So I'm going to start making some ice again. Oh, one other little disclaimer. The dyes that we use today are acid dyes, not fiber reactive dyes, so therefore these dyes from Paradise Fibers would not work on a t-shirt. 
I would need to do that with fiber reactive dyes. I am very disappointed that this color would not stop bleeding. And I truly think that it's just the turquoise was at too high of a depth of shade. I should have used less of this pigment. I shouldn't have tried to use all of it on the project. But at least I love the color. Now, some things can rinse clear and then bleed later on. That is something that should happen. But the amount of blue that kept coming out and coming out of this yarn isn't something that happens very often at all and therefore I would not be comfortable selling something that I was not confident I had rinsed, rinsed well enough. There are a few other things I could try. I could soak this in some vinegar and go ahead and steam set it again. That actually is something that maybe I'll go ahead and do, but also I have been handling this a lot and rubbing it and the color isn't crocking or rubbing off on my fingers. So I would be okay using this for personal use. Thankfully, we did not see any bleeding at all on this final skein. But if you compare the pigmentation between this and the one where we saw all the bleeding, uh, this is a pastel. There's not very much of the pigments uh, in here at all. And so therefore, uh, I think that some colors, and from Dharma, Purple Pop is an example, some colors can be really bright and intense, but you don't need to use that much of them, and if you use too much, then the dye won't necessarily be happy. So that's always worth keeping in mind. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this look at my first time dyeing silk fiber using an ice dyeing technique and also my first time using the Paradise Fibers new acid dye collection. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when I reached out to Paradise Fibers and asked, they generously sent me the entire color line. So I plan to do a more full in-depth review, uh, cost comparison, and look at the color range in a later video. So make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video. And while this video isn't sponsored, I do want to give a little plug for the Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club. It is a really creative, unspun fiber subscription. And I would say that three to four times a year, it might include some kind of dyeing project. And there's usually a lot of innovation in there. And I know I have a lot of fun playing with them and I get really excited when there is a dyeing project. You can find my affiliate link down in the video description. While you're at it, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I think that if I were doing this again, I would do things really, really similarly with the silk. Maybe I would use a tiny bit less of the fuchsia and turquoise dyes, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. The one difference I would make with the yarn that I have beneath to catch everything that drips through is if there is stuff that has not bound to superwash yarn when I know things usually bind pretty quickly, I might leave that alone and take the yarn out, squeeze out, and steam it as it is to avoid rinsing and rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. So just throwing that out there, I think that that's what I, the one thing I would change going forward because a lot of colors that I use, if I leave them outside for a couple of hours with acid, will absorb completely to the type of superwash yarn that I used as the yarn mop. Thank you so much for watching.